Good evening, everybody, and welcome to this, the second um, HDB Serials and Oil Seeds uh, webinar. My name is Richard Meredith. Um, I'm one of the Knowledge Exchange Managers, and I cover the, the West of England. Um, so I'll be chairing tonight's webinar. So my first um, points to go over are just the housekeeping points. You're all muted, so we can't hear you. Don't panic. Um, but if you do want to ask any questions, these can be typed in, in the box on the right-hand side of your screen. We're, we're starting here at 7 o'clock now and aiming to finish by 8 o'clock. There'll be a formal question period at the end, but please do send in any questions that you may have as we go through. Um, if there's a convenient point, I'll stop Harry and ask him. Um, there's also going to be basis points um, available. If you do um, want me to, to put your name down on the register, please, in, your, in the notes section, um, type in your name, date of birth, and your, and your basis number. Um, before I introduce tonight's speaker, I just need to thank um, our colleague at HTV, Elena. Um, she's she's working in the background to, to host this webinar tonight, and we're very grateful for, for her help um, in doing so. So, without further ado, Harry Henderson, our speaker tonight, sat next to me here at the offices at HTV. Um, Harry's my colleague who covers the, the East Midlands region. Um, he joined HDB um, coming over from John Deere, where he is a crop production specialist. Um, so he's got a wealth of knowledge on the the, the um, topic of machinery choice and and um, decisions. Um, and the most important thing to, to kind of stress about Harry Harry and why why we um, we got him doing these webinars is that he's independent. Um, he's not pushing any kind of agenda or, or sales speak. Um, but I'll let Harry do do the talking for himself. Harry, thank you very much for joining us this evening, and I'll, I'll pass over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Richard. Uh, yes, uh, welcome from me. Um, yeah, we thought we'd do, we, we've been doing these uh, machinery uh, um, choice guides, I suppose, and uh, the, the first one was harvesting. The second one we thought we'd do would be, uh, would be crop sprayer. Um, and again, yeah, like Richard says, I, I will mention makes, I will mention models. Uh, I think it gives it. I'm sure you'll agree. I think it gives us a bit of context. If I could, if uh, if I just kept mentioning sprayer X and sprayer Z, and sprayer Z came from from the southwest and was painted red, you know, you kind of work out what was going on. So, um, but as as Richard also says, we're not here to sell anything. Um, I I really don't mind what you what you buy, but um, it's it's. I want to take it from an economic standpoint. So uh, in the next few years. Um, things are going to change. We don't know how, but um, you know, w can you come from a, a different angle to uh, to look at your uh, your spraying technology? So we'll um, we'll just go through the uh, quick agenda really. Um, considerations: What do you need to consider when buying a new sprayer and investing in a spraying system? We'll talk quick briefly about field efficiency and how you get more out of your sprayer. Um, we'll go tackle the old chestnut of um, uh, trail sprays versus self-propelled, uh, and, uh, and look at actual loads as well. We'll talk also about technology. Um, lots of technology on uh, on on sprays at the moment. What's really helpful? What's less so? And and if you get this technology, how can you make it work for you uh, even better than it does now? Uh, high capacity pumps and large tanks. We'll talk about that. Do you really need the biggest tank you can really afford, or is it? Or is there another way to get uh, higher capacity out of your uh, out of your sprayer? And we'll run. We'll finish off really. We'll round off with, with some uh, sprayer costings. Just give give you an idea. And these costings have come from a monitor farm uh, meeting that we've uh, we've run in the past. Um, it's a it's a popular topic. Trying to calculate uh, costs, sprayer costs, and sprayer sizes, and and so on. So um, if you ever in the vicinity of a monitor farm meeting, then you know do go along very open and uh, and generate some good conversation, sometimes even feisty conversation. Um, so the spraying system um, is it just about the sprayer? No, of course it isn't. You know that uh, it's about work rate. It's about uh, system efficiency and the system uh, system of reliability. I won't go all through all of these because this will end up being a fairly big uh, and busy slide. But um, you can see there's lots of uh, lots of things to add in here. Um, if we expand on the f system efficiency, how big your fields? Have you got 200 10 acre fields, or have you got one 2,000 acre field? I don't know. Um, operator skill, training, and attitude that will 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 emphasize that right through this uh, uh, with it, the webinar. Um, management, expertise, organisation. Is it going as smoothly as it can, or could it go better? Safe working, of course. Access to water is very important as well. Um, field conditions, again, operator skill will come into that. 
uh, time available. Um, are you in a particularly windy place? Have you got particularly damp and wet soils that limit your travelability? Um, so there's lots of things to consider. Um, are you in the uh, just in the um, in front of the Pennines where it's mostly raining, or are you on the Essex coast where it's it's reasonably dry? Um, so there's lots of things to uh, to talk about. One of the things here um, in the financial uh, factors, interest rate, inflation, yeah, 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 uh, labour costs and so on. And right at the bottom, vanity cost. How much are you paying to look like you're, you're a professional blackgrass grower by buying a good, uh, sizable sprayer? So we can we'll go through that as well. Um, talking, we'll go straight into it. Really, we'll uh, with um, the self-propelled machines have, have grown substantially. Um, most of them will have 800 mils of, of clearance under actual clearance. Um, and we're climbing up to 1.1 meters of, of clearance these days on bigger machines. Four-wheel steering is very, very um, uh, key for these machines, and it's an absolute must for potato growers who are turning cleanly out of uh, rows so they, they can get a, a good entry and exit for their for the harvester. Um, are they lightweight anymore? They used to be. You'd uh, you'd end up with a with an agri buggy that was very light on foot. But now with with larger tanks, four and five and eight thousand liter tanks, um, they they're uh, they're seriously putting on some weight. Some of these machines, of course, um, they uh, uh, need a bigger engine to uh, to haul eight thousand liters at a at a good speed. You need to have a good turn of speed down the road. So you need a better chassis. You need um, uh, Better brakes, the whole thing just ends up having getting more and more weight on board. So we'll uh, we'll tackle that sort of uh, um, route to productivity as we go through this uh, through this webinar. We thought we'd just touch on weight distribution of some of these machines. And yes, yes, it's uh, we're not going to blank out what make it is, but um, this is a, a, a typical self-propelled machine. Um, we're going to assume a 4,000 litre tank on this machine because we we came in and, and weighed it. Uh, Few years ago, um, 30 inch tyres fitted, and you can see there that uh, the full or the the full tank on the rear axle is just under eight tons. On the front axle, you're just over five tons for a total weight of 13.3 tons. Empty, uh, five five uh, uh, tons on the back, and this is all with the boom unfolded because uh, you can, as you can imagine, with a with a 36 metre boom unfolded, you'll you'll and change the uh, the weight loading weight distribution on the on the two axles so uh, this machine is just under under nine nine tons empty so it's a big old machine it's it's quite heavy um, there are different opinions on weight distribution that's got to be said that the cabs in front of the engine on this one and you can have the cab be behind the engine and you can have the engine behind the tank on on some mach machines as well uh, and this will all change the, uh, the weight distribution, but perhaps it's the weight that's the uh, the, the important thing to consider here. And um, for sure, you can get taller tires, you can get a longer footprint, you can get higher flex tires. Um, personally, I'd like to see more um, auto adjust uh, air pressure tires to make the best of high flex tires on the field, and then pump them up a little bit to go down the road and let them back out again when let the air back out again when you're going down the uh, the field but uh, it's a it's a heavy old machine um i've got a question there for you harry if i can interrupt um one grower has asked here i can see sprayers going slower 12 to 14 at higher water rates 120 to 150 liters per hectare for most operations looking at changing from 36 meters to 30 meters for controlled traffic farming but not sure will this give me more benefits or not? Um, it's an well. It's I suppose the question is if you if you've got a 36 meter machine now, are you comfortable with its productivity? Does it leave you a little bit short? Um, are you thinking that uh, I'm under too much pressure? Um, so can you can you go to a, th a 30 meter um, setup? Um, it's, we'll go th further on through the the webinar and some calculations I can give you to get you your crops and your and the areas of your crops and and kind of give a, a target to uh, for you to think about uh, how quickly do you need to spray uh, how, how much capacity do you really need so um, if we we can revisit that bit um, or you can you can see what the calculations I've got and, and run those calculations yourself and see whether from our point of view a, a 30 meter machine would uh, would run 
Um, right, let's go on to a uh, trial machine. Um, more axles um, with a with a 4,000 litre tank again. We've got uh, a, a full tank on five five point eight tons on the rear axle of the uh, of the axle of the sprayer. Uh, the tractor is a seventy five thirty, and and that's six point three tons on the axle of the tractor. And on the front, it's uh, two point two tons. And this is actually without the the front weight on the uh, on the front of the tractor. Um, it comes to a total of fourteen point three tons or fourteen point four almost. So it's all together. It's a heavier machine. Um, but it's all spread across more axles, um, and that's really the the point I wanted to make. That um, you know, there's it's potentially a, a, a less uh, soil damaging, less uh, less likely to make it some ruts. Um, empty, it's much lighter, uh, 3.5 tons on the on the sprayer, just under four on the back axle of the uh, of the tractor, and a little bit more weight on the um, on the on the front axle. The 10 tons in total, so it is heavier. It's a, it's a heavier machine, but it just gives you an idea of the of the weight distribution between these machines. Um, technology on between trail sprayers and solar propelled is largely the same these days. Um, you can get boom height control, auto section switching, and variable rate. Uh, the steering systems are uh, much better than they used to be on on uh, on uh, sprayers as well. You can get rear axle steering, draw bar steering. Um, it's uh, you know it's they they all follow very very well. The big one that everyone comes back at you with is do trial sprays tip over? Well, yes they do. Um, so do tractors, so do combines, so do self propelled sprayers. Um, if you're a, if you're um, keen on social media, you'll have seen photographs of everything on its side in, uh, in over the last few years, um, being shared around from various parts of the world. Uh, I think the thing that gives a trial sprayer a bad reputation for being uh, tipping over is if you're in a, a mounted machine, uh, mounted on a tractor, or uh, on a, uh, a self-propelled machine, there's and you're operating on side slopes, we'll probably come to a point where you've got a bit unstable, and you know I'm not saying it's gone up onto two wheels and crashed back down to earth again, and you've sat in the cab thinking, okay, I know where the limit is for this machine. The downside of the uh, the trail machine is that it doesn't really give you any indication, and um, it it will just uh, uh, you know uh, start to tip over, and before you know it, it's at a horrible angle. Um, I have to say, nitpicking between one design and another, there doesn't seem to be any any real um, change in it really. If you're going to tip it over, you're going to tip it over, um, and and you know. Picking between designs isn't going to help. Probably widening your um, track width is. Um, it, don't even attempt to think of uh, 76 inches. So uh, let's go to so 80 inches, 84 inches, um, and and get those wheels widened out, and then that will be a much much uh, more stable machine. Technology. Um, but uh, auto section switching and nozzle switching. I mean, it's it's generally you know understood that you can save between three and uh, six percent on applications, uh, will reduce lodging in in short work, and is very user friendly. It's an easy thing to set up. Once you get the thing set up, it's it's just a doddle. You just leave the master switch on, and the, and the sprayer looks after itself effectively. Um, but you know, with all of these things, it's it's not a, a an idiot proof system. It does need. A, an operator that's on board and uh, conversant with the system, um, he should receive regular training. If there's clinics run at the dealership, then send him along. Um, there's always something you can pick up, and even talking to other operators um, at the clinics or on uh, forums, then that can be uh, very useful as well. Um, the one thing I'd say about the uh, auto section switching is it's speed change sensitive. And uh, I'll, I'll be quite careful how I explain this, but if you're travelling at 14k, that's uh, 3.88 meters a second, that the some issues can arise when you're just slowing down to come up to your your field end, or you're accelerating hard away from the from the uh, the headland, then the signal from the GPS receiver uh, isn't as quick as as you are um, um, accelerating or or deaccelerating. So you can trick the system into either switching on um, uh, early if uh, if the machine if you're accelerating, or it can come on late if you're uh, 
uh, accelerating away from your from your headland. So keep it steady. Keep the the, the speed steady, and uh, the system will be uh, you know that much more accurate. Just as a, um, a piece of information, really, I don't expect you to to be taking photographs of this or writing it down. But um, whilst I'm talking about that, we'll put all of this onto our YouTube channel, and you can you can take a look at this in in greater detail. But what we've got here really is you can see the ground speed is here in miles per hour or kilometers per hour, um, and we've got the the physical machine reaction delay time. Now this is goes from one second right through to ten. Now uh, I, I don't suppose anyone's got a machine that takes ten seconds to switch off, but you could use it for uh, very wide CD uh, uh, equipment. And then you've got the distance travelled and time um, uh, travelled as well. So it's just a piece of information that you can use as a, as a, as a kind of a ready reckoner if you like. Um, and it's quite interesting to just understand, not going that fast, 13 kilometers per hour here and uh, at a two second uh, delay time then you've already done 7.15 meters. So it's a ready reckoner and you could use this for, for drilling um, and when you're setting the system up and you can gain an understanding of if it seems to be not quite where you want it to be, this this could be could uh, be some uh, good information for you. Uh, boom height control. Um, of course, the ideal nozzle height is uh, 25 centimeters above the top of the crop. Uh, it's hard work. Um, you you want to be looking forwards, and if you, you you're looking behind you all the time, you've got a, a lot on your plate. So boom height control systems can be very very useful. Um, you can see um, we've we've got Tom Robinson here who came to one of our monitor farm meetings and it's worth 20, 20 pound a hectare in improved uh, weed control simply by having the, uh, the the boom at an optimal height above the crop rather than the weeds so it'll pay for itself there's no doubt about it um, running the the, uh, the boom just a foot too high can increase drift by sixfold so um, it's it's it it's a good technology it's got to be said um, essential for 36 meters and uh, and wider, and 24 meters you see, often see it on there as well. Um, and good operators will help it work. We've all um, experienced large holes in all-seed rope that you you've, you've uh, haven't got any crop, and if you go sailing into it without actually adjusting, the boom will start to adjust downwards towards the uh, the ground. And if it comes back into full uh, all-seed rope in flower again, there's little hope that it's it's going to get back set up uh, set up again. So in in many situations, the operator would take control, just knock it off auto, um, go past the uh, the, the um, lack of crop in your field, and then set it back onto auto when it's got to a chance of adjusting to the height of the crop. Um, <clears throat> auto rinse systems. Um, clues in the title. It's not an auto wash. It's auto rinse. Um, there is a uh, an ISO uh, standard for this, uh, 22386. Um, it will. Comp most auto rinse systems should. Well, this is from machines sold in Europe. Um, hopefully, the machines sold across out of the UK will have this uh, standard as well if they're claiming to have uh, auto rinse systems. But there is a standard. And uh, after a complete washout, the, uh, the, the, the remaining liquid within the sprayer should not exceed 0.01% uh, of the original tank concentration. So that's very, very low. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a fairly stringent um, uh, uh, standard to adhere to. Um, the, uh, the legal minimum for a, a clean water capacity on a machine is, is 400 litres. Um, of a clean clean water tank to have on board, um, so it's it, they're very very good systems these days. Um, I'm hearing that uh, there's compressed air systems now that will will uh, apply a low level of compressed air into your um, plumbing beneath the sprayer tank and reduce that uh, um, uh, amount of spray concentrates even less. So these some of these machines now really get into uh, to be a very good at uh, at uh, environmental protection. So again, um, in, ensure that the uh, sprayer operator is up to date on this sort of thing and uh, encourage regular training. It um, is just a it's a money saving um, thing that you can do to just reduce the amount of washings that come back to the farmyard uh, and uh, that you have to take care of. 
good photograph of this. Um, you can see there's not much boom rinsing going on here. Um, you can see there's no boom recirculation going on, so I don't know how many sections that are, probably something like seven. But uh, you can see that uh, um, it's 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 come all right, but um, yeah, that's not good to ha good news to have alongside the road. Typical bit of spray damage here. Um, whether this was double dosing, I don't know. Um, it, do it wasn't the um, the full width of the boom of the sprayer, so what was going on here, I don't know. But that's when everyone starts pointing at each other. The agronomist is pointing at the sprayer operator. The sprayer operator is pointing at the sprayer, and and who knows what happened. Um, but uh, yeah, some bit of scorch gone on. And a similar sort of thing here you can see. Um, this is a photograph I took a few years ago. We don't quite know what happened here. It was uh, you can see it goes across the the uh, the boom. You can see the rows going straight straight away from us. Um, yeah, I wonder whether it was something that was in the field beforehand after the uh, after this wheat was uh, uh, drilled, and the wheat just got hold of it as it came into here. So well, let's go into spray size. Um, and pick this photograph up off of the internet somewhere where this guy's very proud of the fact he's got a very, very big sprayer. Um, but uh, do you really need that size of machine? Let's, go, let's, let's look at a few calculations to help you decide. So we need some constants. We need um, somewhere to start from. Um, and so let's just, let's just run through those. How much do you need to cover in a day? Well, if you said in the middle of the spring and you've got all of your crops in the ground, the winter uh, crops are there, spring crops are drilled, the whole farm uh, is, has got a crop on it and it's, it's April. If you really needed to get across your whole farm, how quickly, what line in the sand would you, uh, would you put to get across your whole farm with one sprayer or two sprayers? Well, if I was to say to you three days or th 36 hours, so three 12 hour days, that would be pretty good going for anyone's uh, machine and uh, you'd be able to cover uh, quite a bit of uh, ground with that. So let's say three days or th uh, three 12 hour days, 36 hours worth of spraying. Uh, how fast can we go? Well, do, you know, despite modern sprayer advances, I know we can do 16, 18, even 20K, and these modern sprayers are pretty good at uh, boom stability. It's still the nozzle really that will peg your uh, your speed to uh, to 12 to 14k. Uh, the nozzle manufacturers would 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 recommend that's the kind of ideal speed, probably closer to 12 as well in the, in most, most situations. So we've got a little bit of leeway in there if we stick to 12k through uh, through that this exercise. How much travelling and filling time is required? Well, talk about in field efficiency. If we said the master switch was on for 60, 60 percent of the time that you're in the field and, and, and filling and so on, then that's a pretty fair bet. Um, it's a, it's something you can try yourself. You can you can record how much time you're actually spraying in a given hour, um, and if it's getting beyond 65 percent percent, then you, you're doing pretty well. To keep a sprayer going, a bowser can make a huge difference, and we'll, we'll allude to that later on. But uh, it, a bowser can make a big difference. If you've got water right in the field, um, you know it's it's painful maybe watching the guy in the bowser just read the paper for it whilst he's spraying. But uh, it can boost the efficiency of the sprayers uh, hugely. And how much difference is there between productivity uh, of a trailed machine and a, and a self-propelled? Well, um, there's probably not that much in in the in the field. Uh, the trail, if it's depending on the tractor, can easily do 40k, maybe maybe 50k. Could have better brakes, um, and and so on. So it's a bit it's a, you know better machine on the road. But of course, self-propelled machines are getting to 40k now. 50k is is quite common. So there's probably all said and done, not that much difference in it. There was a time when a, 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 a trail sprayer with a 50k tractor could get to the field and back again quicker than the sub propel but it's the sub propels to be fair are catching up so yeah it's up to, it's up to your own uh, individual situation have you got a spare tractor and uh, to to pull a trail machine with or um, do you need the sub propel for uh, for other work other than uh, than cereals work so let's take an example um we've got uh, 430 hectares of combinable crops here we're going to uh, uh, divide the uh, the 430 uh, 
hectares of crops uh, by the 36 hours of time in which you have to spray it and that gives us 12 hectares per hour spraying time and I've underlined spraying time there because it's master switch on it's you actually um, applying chemical. Here's the science bit so we've got the hectares per hour uh, times 10 for a coefficient and then we've got the the, uh, the kilometers per hour times our field efficiency divide those two numbers and then you've got the required boom width so I guess really you could use this for uh, for seed drills as well by by, many, by using the uh, by, by using the uh, calculations so go through some examples width needed here we've got 12 hectares per hour here times 10 12 kph uh, times we've gone for a 60% a field efficiency of, of 0 0.6 comes to 120 7.2 so what we've got here is, is a number of 16.6, .6, which rounded up really is uh, is uh, comes to an 18 meter sprayer. Um, we've done this uh, um, um, exercise a couple of times with farmers, and there was one guy with a 36 meter sprayer across his, his 400 hectares of land. So he, he was a bit shocked. Um, doing it uh, slightly different, if we've got this same uh, requirement of output here times 10 same speed but now we've got 50% of our time is, is spraying uh, so it's a little bit lower uh, more traveling perhaps more filling and so on then the number goes up to 20 meters uh, and you need a 20 meter sprayer and if we go a bit faster and um, so and this is really pushing things this is we're averaging 16k um, down the field and we, we've got a quick turnaround system here. We've got the chemical cans are open, ready to go in. All the premixed, uh, and the bouncers on on standby at the at the end of the field. Then you can get down to a 12 meter sprayer. But that is pushing things. Is uh, you, you'd be a fairly stressed man to be achieving an average speed of 16k and and turning your uh, um, spray around back into the field spraying within 30 uh, percent of your given hour. So. It's just a few calculations, really, to to backstep what you uh, what you use. Um, it takes it uh, just gives you an idea of the boom width that you can uh, you can expect to to get go forwards with. Another um, exercise here, really, with with sprayer sizes. Bigger farm. I realise that for, uh, 430 hectares is, is a certain size. So if we go for a bigger machine, a bigger farm altogether, um, we've got the rotation here. A um, few. Um, uh, bits of uh, uh, information about the farm and we've got 1557 hectares to spray now again yep yeah, three days so within 36 hours of what does that mean so same calculation here what would you recommend well let's have a look 36 hours uh, divided by the uh, uh, 1557 hectares um, we've got a required output of 43 and a quarter hectares per hour, uh, which, is, which is some going. You'll probably be able to do it in, on the straight, but we need to uh, factor in the uh, uh, field efficiencies as well. So acquiring the same uh, calculations, um, we've ended up really same speed, 12K, same field efficiency at 60%. It's come out as a 55.44 meter boom width. Now I don't know many sprayers that will uh, will do that, so you can immediately say, okay, we're uh, into uh, into two sprayer territory here, and so that opens a whole new can of worms up. What width do you want to go? Um, and it's interesting the question we've just had. Um, control traffic. Um, do you want to uh, factor it in for control traffic? Um, and you know maybe the 30 meter system would work. Um, certainly you need more than 224s you can obviously see um, and if, if it's a control traffic system then it's going to control header size the unloading auger is, is going to be affected as well if you want to unload on the go which is going to make the system work um, and uh, unloading augers now getting much more much better at, uh, at suiting this type of farming and of course your cultivations and your drilling strategy are going to be called into play so it brings in a whole raft of other questions and uh, and it, it the your system your your sewer production system now gets called into play in a, in a in a bigger way 
Um, can I stop, just interrupt there, um, Harry? I've got a couple of questions for you. First one um, is asking for your comments, not so much a, a question. Um, your field efficiencies are quite high. Many sprayers will not hit 75% field efficiency in field, let alone include transport and fill time. What do you think about that? Yeah, um, I mean those field efficiencies are probably more to do with your in-field mixing, so they're probably not going to uh, include the, the travelling time um, from the field and back again. I have another few slides in, in a little while about um, um, the, uh, the, the travelling time and there's a tool on our website, on the Seals and All Seeds website, where you can put in the travelling time and you can add that in and uh, the, um, some of the, uh, the, the efficiencies with the travelling time included are fairly poor. You know, you're looking at below 40% for uh, of your time spent with your sprayer is actually spraying. So uh, yeah, it's, it can have a, a big effect. And another another question, or asking for your for your comments, really. This one, um, I have a 36 meter sprayer, 4,000 liter tank, engine hours are 900, sprayed 10,000 hectares per per year, 11 hectares per engine hour. What are your comments on this? Um, a lot of figures for you. Yeah. Um, well, um, I, I assume it's uh, well. It's obviously self-propelled because you're uh, you, you've given me the hours. Um, I think if you're comfortable with it, I think you know there, uh, if you're able to. Um, there's a couple of calculators on our website that you can calculate the cost. Um, it's it sounds fine by me, and uh, if if you can, it, it's making it pay really. So, is it within line? Um, what, what your expectations are of of uh, of um, of costs, um, and it's pretty easy to understand the costs where you've got your initial purchase price, the time that you expect to to hang on to it for, the the your the price that you expect it to be worth at the end end of its life on your farm, and uh, and the hectares it's uh, it's 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 um, covered, um, and you can get a price per hectare for the sprayer, and uh, you can get a price per hour if uh, if you want to as well. But price per hectare is more accurate. I've got to say the price per hour is a little bit uh, meaningless, I guess. Um, but um, yeah, it's 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 difficult to make a comment on it, to be honest, because um, um, if it works for you, that's that's absolutely fine. If you discover that there's a, a more cost-effective way of doing it, then that comes into play. Whether you you replace like for like, or whether you you look further afield and and um, uh, uh, choose something, another system. Here we are then, sprayer tank size. Now this is a, a calculator that's available on our website and uh, you can download it. Um, and we've looked at it for sprayers and we've got model A and model B um, here. Um, and we've, you can use it for other machines as well. And uh, we've got uh, liters here of 2,000 litre tank, which is fairly old, old school these days, um, a 12 kilometre per hour forward speed, application rate of 200, and here's where your transport time comes in. Um, we've got what each way is uh, 10, 10 minutes, uh, filling time is 10 minutes, field efficiency is 75, which is again fairly robust in, in the field, but you can see that uh, you've got the, these figures here will be automatically populated but the overall efficiency is fairly low, 36.1% uh, because of the filling times and because of the travel times. So what we've done, we've theoretically bought a sprayer that's twice the size, gone to a 4,000 litre tank, everything stays the same, um, but now we're filling less. We've got, um, oh no, we've got, uh, yeah, 20, 20 minutes um, filling time instead of 10 because now we've got twice the size of tank and no uh, change in uh, filling rate, both at, uh, at 200 litres uh, per minute. Um, your spot rate is, is the same, um, so the fuel efficiency has gone up to 43%. Now, if we try and we think, okay, we've got a 4,000 litre tank, we're going to put a bigger pump on things. Let's look at the stuff going. We've got the filling time has now come back down to 10 minutes, and we've got a 400 litre uh, per minute pump on, and we are f uh, overall efficiency has gone up to just under 50%. So things are looking pretty good. Um, the downside of this is that um, 
and many of you will know that if you've got five chemicals to get in, are you going to get them all in, measured out and tipped in, cans washed, jug washed, everything t tidied up within 10 minutes? And I think uh, people end up buying a, a, a bigger pump machine thinking they'll get, they'll get away quicker and then they're under stress to try and um, stop the machine getting full too quick. Um, you can slow the water down on, on, on modern sprays. It can go into filling mode and, and just reduce the amount of uh, um, water that you're taking on board for the time that you're filling whilst you still have clean water available at your induction bowl. Um, so that, you know, that can be useful. But um, the, you've got uh, a, 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 a you know, more efficient sprayer there again. So we'll look at another sprayer. Um, this time we've gone to uh, 6,000 litres. We've gone up the uh, the pump scale as well. We're now taking on uh, 600 litres per minute, and so we've kept our uh, filling time to 10 10 minutes. This of course might be useful when if if you're a, a liquid fertiliser guy as well. That can be very useful. And I feel overall efficiency has gone up to 15.1, uh, 55.1%. Uh, uh, percent So we're getting there again. You might notice that I've kept the, uh, the the application rate to 200 liters across the board for 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 the sake of the argument, but you can use this calculator and you can try different uh, um, application rates at your, at your leisure. Now we've gone for a sprayer model E. Um, we've gone back down to 4,000 liter tank. We've gone now. We've gone to 100 liters um, application rate um, uh, per hectare. Oop. And you can see. Now we've gone. We've still retained a 400 litre uh, per minute pump, and we've well, our field efficiency has gone up uh, to just under 60 percent. So you can see by manipulating and changing numbers across the board, you can you can see where you know you you might be getting a, a more sprayer for your money if you're able to support it with a Bowser, or you've got short trips to the where your access to your water is. Um, if you rent some land off site and and can you get some water set there? Do you have to come and trail back to the main base and then come go back out again? Um, Sprays are good on the roads these days, but it's it's not actually earning any money whilst the uh, there's nothing coming out of the nozzles. So um, you know it's important to get the best out of your machine. Uh, you know, get the the most uh, most productivity out of it. Um, we just thought we'd run through some spray costs. This again has come from uh, from a monitor farm meeting that we. Uh, we ran a, a year ago or so, and um, we've got uh, the the question was really, should this uh, this uh, particular farm had a, an existing Hausen sprayer, and his question was, should he go on to a, a brand new Bateman, um, should he buy a brand new trialed, uh, should he pull the brand new trialed with his existing 7530 John Deere tractor, or should he buy a new 180 to 200 horsepower tractor uh, to replace the John Deere. Um, the bog barley spreader is on the end here, um, just costed in because he was also into uh, granular fertilizer, and the telehandler was costed in as well, as you can see. Um, and so this was a fairly comprehensive uh, costing exercise, um, as, as you can see. I'm not going to go through all of the figures, but you can see that because the, the 7530 depreciated somewhat, it's um, costing £33.27 an hour to run with with labor all up. Um, of course, you spread the, that tractor's costs all over more hours, then those costs will go down. You can see a new tractor here is costing £52 an hour because it's paying the highest level of uh, depreciation at the time. The telehandler is £28.50, which is about average, really. You know, you could price most telehandlers at, uh, at 25 quid to 30 quid, um, depending on the size, I guess. Housing sprayer at, um, at the time was costing £47.15 an hour. Um, so you know, not bad. Same size Bateman, all but I think same boom widths uh, in particular, 80 pound because it's just a new machine. Spray a trailed machine at uh, three pound 11, and the bog balance spreader just at 76 pence a hectare. Good, good value. So just going through uh, putting these costs together, of course, you've got your self-contained, uh, self-propelled existing housing is uh, is running at 10 hectares per hour. So easy to work out, £4.72. The new machine, he, uh, the particular farmer didn't envisage any greater output from a machine that was of the same size and capacity. But you can see that the uh, the costs have gone up. Uh, for And basically, you're paying for a more reliable machine. The, the, uh, 
um, the the new machine will be uh, uh, under warranty. Um, you'll be paying a greater uh, depreciation on it. So that's where the the extra cost is coming from. Uh, at time, that that new machine will will match the uh, existing machine. The uh, 7530 new spray you can see comes in at uh, six pound forty four. So somewhere in the middle of the two machines two self-propelled machines and the new sprayer and new tractor comes in at just a bit more uh, more money than the uh, the new sprayer new self-propelled sprayer so you can see the costs are fairly fairly well matched um, so the question is really can you find more work for your new tractor or the existing tractor to get the cost down um, or you know do you would do you not need to hire a tractor at harvest and this uh, the tractor that spools the sprayer can also pull the trailer at, at harvest so there's you know the, these are just general figures they're real figures but um, you know this it will be difficult to to replicate them on your farm but um, they're, they're good good indications of costs that are going on with sprays uh, fertilizer you can see costs four pound 88 and this includes the uh, the loader backup the telehandler backup and the the bog ballot is on the uh, the 7530. Contracting uh, costs really, if uh, if you wanted to do away and not have any sp um, uh, spraying capability on your farm at all, and you're going to go down the contracting route, then that comes in with at uh, 12 pound 35, and for spreading, uh, that's the same. Very rate spreading adds three pounds seventy. These figures have come from the uh, the Contractors Association webpage. So again, it's ballpark stuff, but it gives you a, a bit of food for thought about um, your the, the direction you want want to take in the future. Uh, coming to the close now. This is a photograph I took. Uh, well, I won't say, I won't say where I took it, but um, the uh, the the greatest source I'm sure you're all aware of of, uh, of, of pollution is point source at point of mixing. And you can see this. Um, this is a, a good photograph. I took this spring. There's your water tank on the outside of the shed. There's the chem store, which looks like a it's a um, a chicken shed on on wheels. Um, I'm sure very the most of you have done your basis um, uh, uh, training, and uh, to be it would have been a golden egg to be handed that chemical store and being asked what's the matter with it. So um, it. it just keep an eye on your mixing areas and you know make sure that uh, you don't get had for uh, causing any pollution from foil caps especially and for sp um, spilt chemicals just a tiny spot on on this kind of concrete uh, and washed away will cause far far more damage than the spray will will ever cause out in the field so it's just a point really we're not going to get into this uh, this tonight but um, it's uh, just a point of discussion really and a reminder um, just some conclusions then um, we'll just run through some some of the ideas I'm thinking operator training aptitude if there's clinics available for your operators um, get them on them it's 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 really in your hands to make sure that the, the technology that you've bought on farm is being used correctly and you keep your your operators up to date and, and happy um, and again it's good you know there's lots of um, chat on Facebook and and uh, farming forum and stuff that you can pick up some good good tips and hints many routes to capacity it it doesn't all based on the biggest sprayer that you can uh, you, you can get down your road um, it's there's many routes of, of getting more capacity out of a out of a sprayer and there's many routes of getting this capacity out of the sprayer that you already own most likely so um, just be just be aware that uh, you know having access to water is a huge benefit um, rather than traveling up and down the roads uh, Weight watchers, um, don't be, be hoodwinked into thinking that you're going to buy a 15 ton sprayer and then lo and behold you need tracks on your combine to uh, travel over the ruts. It's not really the, the, why your tracks were invented for combines with going over sprayer ruts, but uh, that seems to be one of the, the major benefits these days. But just watch the weight. Um, ultimately you'll be limiting your time that you can actually travel without making a mess. Um, we often find that um, uh, uh, Philip Wright of, of Wright Resolutions would recommend an actual weight of just five tons, which is a stringent weight weight limit, and there's uh, that's that's very very tough to achieve and and entirely impossible with a combine. 
and it's most likely impossible with the, with spryers as well. But it's a, it's something to watch, irrespective of tyres. Um, you know, the, the high flex, low pressure tyres will help, but you know, they're, they're not the silver bullet um, that uh, the watching your actual weights can be. Great technology um, available on sprays these days. Um, make sure that you you spraying where you want to be spraying, um, getting the the droplets down onto the target. Um, we haven't talked about air sleeve technology or, or twin fluid, but again, that can that's kind of gone old hat now. But you know, it it, it really really does help. And making sure that uh, the um, boom height control and auto section switching or auto nozzle switching can help as well. If any of you went over to um, Agritechnica, there's some interesting technology there where you can now get uh, the uh, while the spray is going around a corner, the inner uh, the sections on the inside of the corner are going much slower than the outsides, and the spray can adjust accordingly. So there's some good stuff coming through. And the spray size for the business. This is the point of really these uh, these machinery webinars that. Uh, What's going to happen in the future? Can you uh, can you are you going to go for a bigger and better sprayer because well, frankly, you you quite like it, or are you going to have to cut pull back um, when uh, um, things change? We don't know what's going to change with the with the onset of Brexit, but uh, it's nice just to calculate out the sprayer that's sized for your business. Um, and costing the return on investment, I guess that's the, the same sort of thing. And you can do that with the uh, the the, the um, downloadable um, uh, spreadsheet from our, from our website. Um, and spraying filling area and chemical store. You've seen. That, uh, I'm not going to say too much about the uh, the, the, uh, the chemical store and that, but it's something that you need to to be aware of. Um, it's the greatest point of of point source pollution. Um, and you'll get angry emails from the the water boards, and they they've got their they they're very good at measuring water quality these days, and they can pinpoint spikes, and they can pinpoint where they think that spike entered the the water, and they can trace things back and back and back and back, and arrive at your farm. So you know, spe pay special attention to uh, to to mixing and the filling areas, and make sure it's it's within uh, with within legislation. So. That's about it for me. Um, we'll, uh, I think we've got some questions coming in, Richard. So, what are we thinking? Right, I've got a couple of questions here for you, Harry. Um, first one: uh, Do you agree that the cropping mix can make a huge impact on the sprayer capacity requirement? Yes. Yeah, it, it'll make a cropping mix will make a huge uh, difference to uh, everything, really. Um, we're moving away slowly from the two wheats and the rape scenario that uh, we kind of adopted um, 15, 20 years ago, and so we're having a wider range of crops um, grown on the farm. So that can ease the pressure on your drilling system, it can ease the pressure on your spraying system, and certainly on the combining system as well. So, um, in a way, as long as people can make money out of these crops, it's 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 a good thing for lessening the pressure on your machinery. Okay, can you go back to the conclusions page? Yep. Um, next comment is um, on the negative on the negative side. As fungicide efficacy declines due to the loss of sensitivity, timing becomes more critical, and spraying capacity gets more important. For example, septoria spray timing now more critical with insensitive pathogen populations. Do you have any comments on that? Um. Yeah, it's it, it. If it needs to be done um, within the day, uh, then do you need to go back to those calculations where I've set it? You need to have it done in three days. Do you need to get it all of your week done in 12 hours or less, or six hours perhaps? So um, it's it's about efficacy. It's about choosing the right nozzle. Um, we haven't touched on nozzles tonight. Um, we we could do in the future, um, but yeah, it's about it's about driving efficacy. Um, there's some interesting developments of weather stations that will measure leaf, leaf wetness and then use uh, forecasting as well and they will send you alert to say yes it's about time that septoria needed spraying and yes it's it's at the ideal conditions so yeah there's there's technology coming through but yeah it's if you need to do it you need to do it um, and you can manipulate those calculations I've got um, to suit 
if you've got any more questions, then if you get those in, I'm not sure this is the question, and I'm not really sure what it means, but we've got David Blacker oh, um, up in New York. Yeah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> he says, no more wheat, wheat, Tenerife. <laughs> well, fair play, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll go out together. <laughs> um, excellent. Um, thank you very much, Harry. I haven't got any any um, any more questions coming in as it is, so I'll um, I'll wrap that one up for, for this evening. Um, thank you very much um, for for putting this on this evening. Um, doesn't doesn't putting these presentations together is um is, is a lot of work for you on top of your your day to day work. Um, just to let you know that these um, this will be recorded and it'll go onto our YouTube channel. Um, if you we, we type in YouTube HDB YouTube, then you should be able to find it in the next few days. The next webinar is um, are scheduled for the 17th of January uh, 2018 and in the new year um, we've got Jonathan Blake from, from ADAS and Mark Wood who is farm manager at JPFK Farms in Herefordshire and is a retired Hereford monitor farmer. Um, they're going to be looking at designing a robust fungicide strategy next spring. Um, and really, kind of the, the point of having the, um, the researcher and the, the the scientist and the farmer together is we're going to discuss how research, how we can put it into practice, how we can implement it um, to make a robust and and um, cost-effective fungicide strategy. Anyway, thank you, Harry. Um, thank you very much. And, th and thank you, Elena. Um, and on that note, I'll, I'll thank you all and wish you good night. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Bye bye.